Welcome back to Ben Rants. And when I was a kid, the easiest way to get someone off the internet was to pick up the phone. Well, I'm angry. Again. At several little things. However, there are a couple of things that really bother me, but I need to get into detail about them. I'm going to spend a lot of time talking, so I only have time to talk about two topics before people move on to another video. So, without any further ado, here is a double feature rant. Oh, come on. Do I really have to start with this one? <sighs> Fine, let's get this one out of the way. So, a couple of months ago, Howard Stern said negative things about bronies on his radio show. Normally, I would say that he has a right to his opinion, and we should leave him alone. However, he did something that was unforgivable. He pulled a me! That's right, Howard Stern unfairly stereotyped bronies and made judgments on us even though he has not seen one second of the show we watch. So, how about we dissect this man's masterful journalism skills? Well, he was intrigued by the idea of BronyCon, so he sent one of his goons to interview some of the bronies to get to understand them better. In other words, he told his goon to pick out the bronies that looked the most ridiculous to him and make them say things that would make us look bad. The goon proceeded to ask them what is the biggest misconception of bronies, and the three that he interviewed said that they are all cloppers. For those of you unaware, a clopper is somebody who looks at erotic pony art and pleasures himself to it. If you don't know what pleasure yourself means, then too bad, because I need to keep these videos G-rated. So, the goon started to ask the bronies if they were cloppers, and they said yes. Seeing as how only three bronies were interviewed, Howard Stern jumped to the conclusion that all bronies are cloppers. <laughs> oh, Howard, you're such a riot. He then proceeded to trash bronies, saying that if Comic-Con is the gathering of losers, then BronyCon is the gathering of the losers version of losers. <laughs> oh my gosh, that insult is so good that I feel bad for not being offended by it. In the end, Howard Stern educated the four people who listened to his show that bronies are sick freaks that look at ironic pony pictures and pleasure themselves to it, even though only three people were talked to about it. Of course, Howard could have told you that bronies have given to charities, helped fund a documentary about themselves, and have developed friendships with each other, and look out for fellow bronies, and have talked to the cast and crew of the show both live and via the internet to show appreciation for their work. But negativity equals ratings. Other highlights of this broadcast included Howard saying that bronies need a celebrity to come out for them. Gee, I can't think of any. And quite possibly my favorite Howard Stern truck up. When he talked about the person who set up BronyCon, Howard asked, how does the guy know 4,000 bronies are going to show up to this event? Simple, Howard. He did research. Which is something that is rocket science to you. Well, after this broadcast, you think it would have been the end of the Howard Stern brony feud. But it wasn't. It was only the beginning. After that one, Howard made another broadcast where he talked about the aftermath of his broadcast on bronies. He said that the bronies were sending him emails, correcting him for, on his mistakes, and it's not wrong to like a cartoon show. The funniest thing from this broadcast came not from Howard, but from his co-host, Robin. You shouldn't be into My Little Pony, period. Right. <laughs> Wait, she's serious? <laughs> Okay, so according to you, Robin, we're not allowed to watch cartoons. Well, I didn't know you were the supreme ruler of the world. I didn't know that cartoons were only made for little kids. It makes perfect sense now. Another highlight was when one of Howard's fellow staff members from America's Got Talent told him that he was glad he listened to Howard's broadcast on bronies because his little girls watched the show, and after he heard what Howard said, he stopped letting his girls watch the show. I refuse to let my girls watch a cartoon that doesn't have any negative themes in it, only because a small amount of men pleasure themselves to it, even though that fact isn't an aspect of the show itself. 
I'm such a good parent. I also love it when Robin said she was interested in finding out who these people were and putting them behind bars. Yes, because liking cartoons is illegal now. There was even one point that Howard played the G1 My Little Pony theme song. This shows how deluded he is from the actual facts. Bronies don't watch the G1 show. Well, not all bronies, but every brony watches the G4 show, which is a show that is made for all ages. Once again, Howard, research. It's not that hard. Finally, this is hilarious. Howard says that if there's anybody that's going to make the terrorists hate America, it's the bronies. <laughs> what? The terrorists don't hate us already? All joking aside, it's people like Howard Stern that make bronies look bad. We're not the freaks of nature that he's claiming we are. We're a group of people just gathering around to show our love for a cartoon. Some of us have different ways of expressing that love than others do. Yes, I'm referring to cloppers. Well, now that I'm on the subject, I might as well give my views on cloppers. I personally don't see anything wrong with them. Sure, I would never do what they do, but who am I to say that it's wrong? If that's what they like to do, then they should have the right to do it. Isn't that what's great about this country? Being able to do what you want and not having anybody say anything about it? Well, the forefathers would be ticked off if you asked me. Anyway, Howard Stern, I don't know you as a person, and I'm not a fan of your work, but the next time you think you can insult a fan base without having a clue about what the fan base is about, then? Well, I think Judas Priest said it best. <laughs> Moving on, as you all know, I admire the work of voice actors. I think they're really underappreciated, and they're without a doubt the best thespians in the world. However, this is one of the several things that big movie studios don't agree with me on. Let me ask you something. What do you guys notice about every animated movie that comes out today? Besides the fact they're all in CGI. That's right, it's the fact that all the main characters in the said movies are played by well-known actors, not by voice actors. This is something that I haven't minded for the longest time, but now I'm getting sick of it. I'm sick of the fact that on every poster for an animated movie I see, the actor's name is above the title. The actors aren't supposed to be the cartoons. The cartoons are supposed to be... Well, cartoons. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not being negative towards actors. In fact, I love some of the actors in these movies, but I just don't like that they're being exposed as if they're the main reason you should see the movie. That's just not right. Aladdin started this with Robin Williams. You couldn't hear one promo for that movie without hearing Robin Williams' name. Come see Robin Williams in Disney's Aladdin starring Robin Williams as a genie played by Robin Williams. Robin Williams, Robin Williams, Robin Williams! Robin Williams! It only got worse from there as they kept making several more actors voice the main characters. This surge in celebrities starring in animated movies has gotten annoying to me. I can't even watch a trailer for a new animated movie that comes out without recognizing somebody's voice. Or, for a majority of the time, not recognizing somebody's voice. Why do we need celebrities to star in animated movies? Why can't we just use voice actors? Well, thanks to Hollywood, it's gotten to the point where people won't even see an anime movie unless they see that somebody who's recognizable is in it. So, I have solutions for this problem. One, you can have stars in the movie, just don't shove them in our faces. The Kung Fu Panda movies are very good examples of this. Out of all the recognizable actors in these movies, Jack Black's is the only name to appear above the title. Dustin Hoffman, Angelina Jolie, Jackie Chan, Seth Rogen, and David Cross's names come nowhere near to the title. In fact, they're not even listed until the closing credits. This is what I'm talking about. The characters are more important than the people playing them. 2. Use lesser known celebrities. This is one of the many reasons The Princess and the Frog was a great movie. It had celebrities in it, but they weren't as well known, so nobody's name appears above the title. Well, except for Walt Disney's, but that's supposed to be there. Three, and my personal favorite solution, USE VOICE ACTORS! Before celebrities were used in animated movies, voice actors were used all the time. It didn't affect the movie whatsoever. Just let people who know what they're doing do what they do best. 
Now, you're probably wondering why I'm throwing a little hissy fit over celebrities being in animated movies. Well, I have a few reasons for that. For starters, a lot of celebrities don't try to be a different character, they just act like themselves. For example, in the Madagascar movies, when Marty the Zebra talks, I don't picture a talking zebra. I picture Chris Rock talking into a microphone. I don't try to, but it's the first thing that comes into my head. I never have that feeling when I'm watching an animated show. When I hear Twilight Sparkle's voice, I don't picture Tara Strong talking into a microphone. I picture Twilight Sparkle. You see the difference here? Tara Strong is actually trying and putting on a different voice for a character that's nothing like herself. Chris Rock isn't trying. He's just being Chris Rock. The character is the actor, and that's never a good sign. My next problem is, I feel the characters are affected by the celebrities. Since the celebrities aren't trying, the characters suffer because the celebrities are just making the character another form of themselves. You, you might as well just throw in a CGI caricature of the actor playing the character. And finally, my biggest gripe is that celebrities just ruin the animated feel for the movie. You see, animation is about being, well, animated. To make an animated character something that's both human, but something that you don't see in real life, a voice actor needs to try hard and make the character come to life. However, with celebrities, since they're not trying, they're making the characters themselves, they just turn the movie into an animated version of the surreal life. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the footage that ends up in some of these films are just the celebrities talking to each other when the microphones weren't turned off. That's just how I feel about the whole situation. However, I'm not saying that all celebrities don't try when it comes to anime movies. I can go way back to the great mouse detective. Vincent Price, being the great performer that he was, brought Professor Radigan to life. Even though he sounded exactly like Vincent himself, Mr. Price made sure to make the character distinguishable from himself, and he pulled it off well. Jack Black is great as Poe in the Kung Fu Panda movies. He's got an animated voice that makes him perfect for the character. And finally, I can't believe I'm saying this, but in the trailers for Hotel Transylvania, I think Adam Sandler is great as Dracula. Wow, you know that's sad when I'm actually praising a performance by Adam Sandler. Well, before I leave you all, there's something else I'd like to address that's related to this topic. Going back to Chris Rock, here's what he had to say about being in the Madagascar movies. He said that being a voice actor is easy, and all you have to do is talk into a microphone. No. No. Just no. Mr. Rock, it's more complex than you think. You see, you're not trying. They don't just talk into a microphone. They have to create different voices for every new character they have to voice. That's not even the hard part. They then have to make that character stand out. Make that character have character, and they have to do all this just by using their voice. Not so easy now, is it, Mr. Rock? Well, there's my double feature rant that include Howard Stern on bronies and celebrities acting like themselves when it comes to animated movies. I really planned on this video being longer because I have so many other things I'd like to talk about. Well, I guess I'll have to save that for next time. Anyway, I'm Ben, and I'm signing out, and... Hey! Next week is October! You know what that means? That's right, it's Oktoberfest! No, this has nothing to do with Germany. It's my next series of videos. During the month of October, I'm going to do Halloween-themed videos throughout the month to celebrate my favorite holiday, Halloween. And, as a special treat, I'll have a different avatar for every video to represent me dressing up for Halloween. I'm really excited for this, and I hope you are too. See you next week for the start of Oktoberfest. And try not to be too afraid. <laughs>